Howdy there, we have another numerical methods problem. Uh, we're going to be doing an example of LU decomposition. And the problem we have says to use LU decomposition to solve the following system of equations. So this one's not too bad, just two variables, two equations we want to solve ultimately for x and y. And you know there's really easy ways to do this just from linear algebra. If you've taken the course, you know there's several uh, much simpler methods to find the value of x and y. But here we want to use the LEU decomposition method. And the problem tells us to clearly show the values of L, U, D, and x. All right, so let's get started. So if you asked me, hey, Alex, what is the easiest way to do this? Just give me the absolutely essential information. Then I would tell you, you might want a cheat sheet that looks something like this. Shazam! So for the cheat sheet I made, I tried to provide just the essential steps, nothing more and nothing less. So I would recommend that you write this down, uh, make this cheat sheet for yourself so, so as you're doing the problems you can refer to it. So AX equals B, that's the first step. You want to convert your system of equations to matrix form and then you're going to want to find u through the manipulation of a and it'll always look like this you'll have numbers along the diagonal and above and zeros below and then based on the manipulation of a you're going to have multiplication factors that you use to get these zeros and that is going to be, those multiplication factors will be substituted for the L matrix, and the L matrix will always have ones along the diagonal, zeros above it, and the multiplication factors below it. And then this is the part that uh, no one really likes. You kind of just have to know these. LU equals A, so we do that to verify that both L and U are correct, and then you use L and B to solve for D with the relationship LD equals B, and then once you have D, you use the relationship UX equals D to solve for X, and our last and final step is to verify our X, Y, and what other variables we have into our original system of equations to make sure they're right. And the best piece of advice I have for you is to learn by doing. So yes, this little cheat sheet is helpful, but you should not completely rely on it. Maybe look at it, glance at it when you have to. So as you're doing these problems, you might forget one step and say, oh hey, how do I do that? Refer to this sheet, but eventually you'll do this enough times and you'll have it down, the whole procedure, and you will not even need this at all. Okay, so let's get right into the problem. Apologize in advance, there's going to be a lot of pieces of paper. But that's alright, we'll get through this. So, 4x plus 7y equals 5, 8x minus 9y equals 33. That is our system of equations. And the first step, if you took linear algebra, this should be relatively straightforward. Your mind should almost do this automatically. So A is just going to be the coefficients on the left side, so 4, 7, 8, negative 9. X is going to be the variables we want to solve for, X and Y. B is going to be the right-hand side of the equal sign, 5 and 33. And you can check this, multiply the X and the Y by 4, 7, 8, negative 9, and it looks exactly, that's how you go back from matrix to uh, equation form. Okay, that was the first step. Not too difficult. So now we want to use A to get U, which has the form U1, U2, 0, U3, which it already looks pretty similar. Uh, if you ask me, we have 4, 7, 8, negative 9. So we want to get rid of that 8, and in its place, get this zero term. So what is the easiest way to do that? Uh, you might already be thinking, 
oh hey, if we multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add that to row 2, that'll cancel out the 8. And if you're thinking of that, then great job, you are correct. You're on the right track. What I like to do is write out exactly what we're doing before we do it. So we're multiplying row 1 by negative 2, adding that to row 2, and getting our new row 2. Okay, so just on the side of your work, I'd recommend writing out each multiplication step on its own. So negative 2 times row 1 is just going to be negative 8 and negative 14, and then row 2 is just going to be 8 and negative 9. Adding these, we get 0 and negative 23. So that 0 is exactly what we wanted. So substituting our new row 2 back into our matrix, we have 4, 7, which is unchanged, and then 0, negative 23, which is equal to u. Okay, so we found u. And now the next step is to find L, which I, I talked about these. This is probably one of, the, one of the most confusing things for people is what are these multiplication factors? So what I want you to think of when you hear multiplication factors, where, where did this come from? How do I get this multiplication factor? Is Go back to the row manipulation. This is also why I said to write it out very clearly. So we're manipulating row 1, we're multiplying it by negative 2, and we're doing that to get the 0. That is why we're multiplying row 1 by negative 2, to cancel out a specific term and get a 0. So what the multiplication factor is, it's going to be the negative of whatever we're multiplying row 1 by. So the negative of negative 2 is just 2. So multiplication factor 1, we only have one multiplication factor, it's 2. This is how it's going to look every time. We're going to have 1's along the diagonal, zeros above it, and the multiplication factors below. MF1 we found to be 2. So L we can write out is 1, 0, 2, 1. Check. And then now what we're going to want to do is check that L times U is equal to A. Okay. So filling in those values, we have 1, 0, 2, 1 multiplied by 4, 7, 0, negative 23 is equal to our original coefficient matrix A, 4, 7, 8, negative 9. Okay. And so just go term by term to check that this is correct. 4 plus 0 is 4, so that term is correct. Um, 8 plus 0 is 8, so that's correct. Um, 7 plus 0 is 7, that term's correct. And then our last term, 14 minus 23 is equal to negative 9, that term's correct. So LU equals A is verified, and we have the correct values for L and U. Okay, moving on to the next step, we can now do step 5 which says L, D equals B. So filling in those values, uh, uh, our L value, 1, 0, 2, 1, uh, D, which we want to solve for, D1 and D2, uh, equals B, which is uh, values 5 and 33. So just multiplying this out, you get D1 is equal to 5, and then 2D1 plus D2 is equal to 33. Okay, so right away, you can see D1 equal to 5, which is very nice. Plugging this back in, we get 10 plus D2 equals 33. 
not too bad, d2 is going to be equal to 2030. So our d vector is just d1, d2, 5, 2030. Not bad, if you ask me. Our last step, almost our last step, actually, step 6, which will allow us to find our solution vector x. So we fill in the values that we just got for d, 523, and we do the same thing. Multiply it out. 4x plus 7y is equal to 5. Negative 23y is equal to 23. Okay, you can see pretty easily right here. y is just equal to negative 1. Plugging that in, you get 4x. Uh, minus 7 is equal to 5. 4x is equal to 12. x is just equal to 3. And we have our solution vector x, which is equal to uh, the values we got for x and y, which we got as 3 and negative 1. So the last and final step, look at your original... Uh, equation and verify that. 4x plus 7y equals 5 and 8x minus 9y is equal to 33 with the values x equals 3 and y equals negative 1. What do we get? So we have 12 minus 7 equals 5 and then we have 24 plus 9 is equal to 33. And if you ask me, both of these look correct. So we are done. We have successfully done LU decomposition. I hope you got through all this, and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching, as always. See you in a future video, hopefully.